Welcome to Mulready Minutes with Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. This is a podcast about insurance for insurance folks, risk managers, and business leaders. We'll dive deep and look at what is and isn't working, talk to leaders in the industry, and keep you informed on what's happening in Oklahoma and around the country. Welcome to another Mulready Minutes podcast. Uh, this is Glenn Mulready, Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner, and uh, we have as our special guest today, Melissa Parchman, someone that I've known for um, quite some time. And Melissa is uh, a specialist in the individual health insurance uh, arena. And um, we are recording today on November 1st, which actually opens up the open enrollment. So uh, November 1st through January 15th is the annual open enrollment time that folks can uh, enroll in uh, ACA marketplace plans or make some changes, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Melissa, welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay. Before we jump in, let me quickly read some of your bio. So I know you very well, but a lot of folks out there don't. So uh, Melissa is CEO and owner of Magoon Associates. She's a native Oklahoman who's been a licensed insurance broker for more than 30 years. She began her career in Tulsa at Bale, Martin, and Fay. Uh, in her eight years with that firm, Melissa was promoted to vice president of individual markets. In 1991, she went to Magoon Associates, and in 2012, she purchased that company. Congratulations, 10 Thank years. Uh, and Melissa is an active member of both the National Association of Health Underwriters and the Tulsa Association of Health Underwriters. Uh, and as an active member, she has lobbied uh, in Washington for health care reform. She's been married for 42 years. Again, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and Melissa and her husband have four boys and live in Jinx. I have three boys, and we uh, boys all came through Jinx. So way to go. Uh, okay, so the uh, marketplace. Let's just first talk very generally. I just mentioned we have open enrollment beginning November 1st. Um, w- what is the marketplace? Okay, so the marketplace is where individuals can go to shop for health insurance individually. They can also, based on their household size and income, possibly get a tax credit to help pay for those premiums. So that would be why you'd want to go and shop there and take a look. Yeah, and I might mention, uh, I can't exactly quote those statistics, but I have seen them before. Uh, But those individuals that are buying coverage, not through their employer, but through an individual health plan uh, that do go, there's a large, um, much more than a substantial number that are receiving full credits for that, uh, full subsidies for their insurance premium. And so, therefore, paying very, very little for that coverage. Is that correct? That's true. There are a lot of people that have gotten substantial help paying for those premiums. And since we lifted the guidelines on the income, even if you make over the 400%, you still can qualify to get help paying for those premiums. So that's why you need to look. Yeah, and, and that's a, a good mention. I, you know, sometimes we get in the weeds here, sometimes not, but I'll get in the weeds for a minute. And so the ARPA subsidies that were set to expire at the end of this year, which was sort of a, it was an enhancement, right, of, of what's what's available out there. And so uh, I know earlier I talked a lot about the, the perfect storm coming for individual health insurance was the ARPA subsidies expiring, as well as the public health emergency expiring, and what that would mean to uh, to our folks. Uh, huge impact. But at least those ARPA subsidies did get extended for another couple of years, so we don't have to worry about that for now. But it does you know, give folks lots more options. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Melissa, when I was uh, first elected in 2018. Um, we had one health insurance company on the Sad marketplace. <laughs> and what I, I should be clear, when I say marketplace, that's capital M, which is the, where, where folks go to enroll at, uh, with, through the federal government So versus small m. So um, we had one plan, and thank God they stuck with us. I guess we, I think we had like two years where we only had that one plan. Last year, we had eight options for folks. Talk to us about that expansion and what that's meant for folks for choices or some of those companies, whatever you want to talk about. Certainly, uh, with more carriers coming on the plan, people had more options to decide what health care that would be a best fit for their family. Um, not every carrier is going to have your doctor in it or maybe your preferred hospital in it, but a lot of times when you're looking at the premium, can you make that work for you? So that's where going to the marketplace and shopping and seeing what you can live with and what will work for your family is very important. Yeah. And there's a lot of subtleties involved. You mentioned a couple of them there. Um, 
you know, like deductibles and copays, but but maybe a more important piece is your doctor, hospital. If you were to rattle off the top two, three items, folks, as they're considering that, to keep in mind, what would that be? Um, they most certainly want to, in the Tulsa area, have uh, St. Francis or St. John's. That would be the preferred hospitals in our area. But Hillcrest has a lot of good um, health benefits also. So, you know, if you have to go to Hillcrest, you need to remember they're the number one burn center. They have Oklahoma Hard. They have one of the better women's centers. So, you know, don't discount it because you might be looking at Hillcrest only. They have a lot of good options at that hospital also. Yeah, and I think uh, something I want to make sure we bring to light, if anyone is is in that space, is w- when we talk about eight carriers last year, eight choices, and this year we'll have seven. Uh, we are losing one of those, but um, not all of those are statewide, so critically important. Uh, right. We have a couple that are statewide, but some are, you know, a few or a handful of counties in the Oklahoma City area, or a few or a handful of counties in the Tulsa area. So. That, that maybe might be number one is just, okay, are they doing business in my county? <laughs> right. And the marketplace is going to settle that question for you. So if you have an option come up from a carrier, they have something available for you in your area. So that makes it nice. So talk us through that, what someone like practically is going to see. They go to the website uh, and, and what are they going to see and how, how are they going to get walked through that? I guess I'm trying to put folks at ease that they are going to get walked through a process in there. and uh, Right. So thank goodness they did simplify their application. So basically they're going to come in and ask general information about yourself, your family, your income. Uh, Most importantly, if you're a husband and wife, do you file taxes together? Because that's very important. Then they're going to start asking you questions about, okay, do you have access to group health insurance? And is it affordable or not? And then you're going to go to a site where it's going to um, calculate an income versus premium assistance from the tax credit for you. So once you get to that point right there, you're going to know how much you're going to get each month to help you pay for your health insurance premiums. After that, you're going to go on to plan selection. And so once you get to plan selection, there's just a few questions of, do you want to use all your tax credit? Because you certainly don't have to do that. So if you're kind of uncertain about your income for the year 23, you might want to estimate lower so you don't have to end up at the end of your end of the year paying back any taxes because we wouldn't want you to do that Uh, and then are you a smoker or not and then after you put in all that information all your options with all the metal levels are going to come up certainly if you are in the lower income at 300 percent or lower you're going to want to look at the silver letter level because in addition to the premium tax credit, you're also going to get some cost sharing, which reduces your deductible and your out-of-pocket. So those are the things you'd want to look for. Uh, if you're Native American, obviously at 300%, you should have uh, zero out-of-pocket on your medical. So a lot of things to consider based on where you're coming from as a family, as an individual, if you're Native, what county you live in, but it's pretty safe At the marketplace, I haven't found anybody that just came back and said, hey, uh, we got in an area that's just not going to work. So I feel good about that. Good. And you you mentioned, I I think I used the word subtleties uh, a minute ago, but you mentioned a number of those in there. So um, that was really good. In fact, folks might want to rewind and go back some of those, some of those, some of those (laughs) details, because those are things to consider. You did say something, though, that um, I want to make sure we talk about the family glitch. So yes. folks may have heard that term, and um, I don't know, they think it's a disagreement at Thanksgiving dinner or something, but uh, that's not the family glitch no. we're talking about. <laughs> no. It was a uh, an interpretation uh, when the ACA first came out and who would qualify for a subsidy and what was considered. Um, you mentioned you're going to be asked if you currently have group coverage available and is it affordable? Because if you have group coverage available and it's affordable, you wouldn't qualify for a subsidy. That is correct. Now, the family glitch, uh, it was an interpretation that created a, a bit of a problem for folks. So, uh, And now now we, we have a fix for the glitch um, re- very, very, very recently. So tell us about that. Okay. This is probably the most exciting thing about open enrollment this year. And uh, it's going to be bumpy. Okay. Let's be truthful about it. Uh, but... Basically what the rule says is if you are a family and you have had to pay for a spouse or dependent's health insurance 
in the past based on your household size and income this year, if you have all of your premiums of what that's going to cost you, so that's going to be a little bit of homework on the consumer's part this year, if you pay more than 9.12% of your household income for health insurance, then your spouse and dependents are going to be able to get on the health insurance plan this year, which is great news because most generally, you know this from experience, the employer pays the lion's share of the mm-hmm. employee-only cost, but many times they don't pay anything for dependents or spouses. That's the crux of what the problem yeah, was. Yeah, and that's and the problem. So this year, the uh, rulings come down that they've taken that away, and many people who maybe went without or are making it work, paying for maybe just a spouse and you know, hoping that nothing happens to the children, have an opportunity this year to come on and get premium tax credits for this health insurance. So we're very excited about this, and I hope that a lot of people, a lot of people in Oklahoma who maybe had to make difficult decisions uh, will get an extra help this year. Yeah. So I might add a little detail to that. So a, a typical scenario might be employer pays for 80% of the coverage for the individual, but pays zero for spouse and dependents. So according to the way those rules went, the insurance coverage for the employee was affordable. Well, it was, but it wasn't for the whole family affordable at all. And so correct. that's what they correct. have tried to correct with this after all these years. Um, but they, they have got that corrected. So that's a really good, um, good point there. Um, Can I talk about the employer part of this, too? Because I did Please. find out something that yeah. kind of helps. Uh, I did talk uh, to Benefit Resources yesterday because I wondered if there would be anything on the Section 125 that would need to be amended because we're allowing this and they have no regulations that have been brought forward for that right now for the employer. But they did feel certain that if that does come down, it'll be retroed back to January 1st. So if you're an employer and you're worried about that and your employee comes to you and says, I want to switch, uh, we feel certain that you're going to be safeguarded with this rule. Good. Yeah, we were um, at the NEIC, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, we sent a letter um, a number of letters, actually, um, on, on some different health insurance issues. But one of them was uh, encouraging a fix to the the family glitch. And I actually, I'm the chair of the National Health Insurance Committee this wow. year. I've been blessed to be in that role. And um, literally, like like days before the letter went out, the feds announced this this fix. And so I've joked many times that just the threat of getting a letter from us uh, got them to take action. But, <laughs> I yeah, like it. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, so we have, um, we, we, we mentioned earlier, we had eight carriers last year. We are losing a carrier. Uh, Bright Health is exiting the market, not just in Oklahoma, but in every state that they were doing business. They, they uh, got in a little over their heads, or I'll just I'll leave it at that. Not exactly sure what happened. I don't want to pontificate on that. But um, tell us what you know about the process uh, of, of what's going to happen with those folks that were, because last I looked, I think we had about 14,000 members in Bright Health. And so... Come this year, they won't be able to re-enroll in Bright Health. Talk to us about those options they have. Okay, so certainly you're going to get a letter about renewal, and you got mapped to a different carrier. So Bright Health is not going to be your renewal information that you got. However, what I want you to know is that you're not going to be um, – stuck is not a good word, but – Required. Required to to stay with that carrier. You're going to be able to have options. So just because you see that, don't be frightened. Know that you can still go to the marketplace. You're still going to go through the same process as usual and still have the options that everybody else would. So I think that's important to know. Yeah, it is important because – I think the intent of CMS, the the federal folks, is that folks don't fall through the cracks. So let's move them or kind of pre-enroll them into right. another plan. Uh, but they do have choices. They can move from that. And again, I'll go back to what we originally started with, making sure they're doing business in your county and all those same questions still still need to be answered. But I think those decisions are being made by CMS based on the closest they could get to provider network and cost and uh, plan design, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, other, we've got seven carriers there. Any, any thoughts on choices for folks or as you walk through folks with folks, walk through that process? I know you do a lot. Anything you want to talk about with uh, the options that are out there for folks? Um, I think that we have a lot of great carriers this year and they have a lot of good options. 
with the marketplace this year, they came out with something. And I, I want to say they called it easy pricing. Have you heard about that? No. Okay, so what they did was they took all the metal levels and they gave them the same deductible and the same out-of-pocket. So when you're shopping, you're going to be able to see an option at the bottom of your plans that is going to have a regular option or they'll have the easy pricing. And the easy pricing will be all through the metal levels, again, with the same deductible and out-of-pocket. So you can try, kind of take a big picture look at what does it look like for platinum? What does it look like for gold? What does it look like for silver? What does it look like for bronze? And that's going to kind of help you make a better decision because your deductible didn't change. So it'll be all the way through. So I'm very excited to see that and what people really, you know, can glean from that. So let me understand that better. So you want to compare a silver plan and the easy pricing is giving you a price based on for each of the plans so so sort of each an apples level. to apples yeah apples that to basically apple basically what it's doing really kind of yeah, bringing so, that down to a real apples and apples you know, just kind of a, a better uh, comparison for you so uh, you know when you look at the marketplace each carrier is going to have a different deductible and a different out of pocket it's not the same for every carrier so this is kind of just you know symmetrical looking where it's going to be the same for every carrier you can kind of look and take a peek what does that look like for me so you know, it's very important that you take a good look this year when you're shopping. So let me ask you, is that a option um, for folks that they could enroll in an easy price plan? Or is that just a comparison it tool? Is, it is an enrollment option. So we're excited to see. We've never had it before. So I really, you know, it's a secret for me, even me, to look at until today. So um, I haven't really had a chance to look. But I do have appointments this afternoon. So we'll see how that really looks for people. Yeah. And I think that's exciting. Good. I might mention too. Um, I, I earlier I mentioned the um, what I described as the perfect storm, and that was the PHE, the public health emergency ending. And so I'll touch on that again. I think we've talked about this before with the um, program we had with our Medicaid agency. But during the public health emergency, which is over two and a half years now, uh, folks have not been allowed. To, states, no states, have been allowed to disenroll anyone from Medicaid. And typically, we are disenrolling 10 to 15,000 people a month off of Medicaid due to they got a new job, they make more money, they uh, it's a pregnant mom who now is X months postpartum and, and, and is scheduled to roll off. So none of those folks have rolled off. Um, but the with the PHE ending now scheduled for January, uh, we'll have a lot of folks coming off looking for individual health insurance, which is exactly what we are we are talking about. They will have their own special open enrollment period. But uh, here in Oklahoma, we're going to have between the open enrollment, standard open enrollment, and now this coming, there's going to be quite a um, quite a wave, I guess, of individual health insurance. So you're going to be busy. I, I like that. <laughs> I hope so. I hope people come to our agency and ask for help. Yeah. And, and so um, a, as we kind of wrap up, Melissa, I think um, – your services and other folks like you would not want to pretend that you're the sole source of information here in Oklahoma. Not not at all, but you are just one of the um, experts in our state on the individual marketplace and, and those enrollments. Um, why go through a broker or, or, or why talk to someone like you versus just going online and enrolling? Talk us through that. Um, okay, so many people might have access to some something that they call a navigator. And a navigator is a agency that's received a grant from the federal government to help people enroll. They're really not supposed to go into uh, the benefits and what they can do for a person. They're supposed to just help them through the enrollment process and let them choose a plan. Uh, with all of the things that I just talked about, it's complicated mm -hmm. now. You need somebody that can actually talk to you about all the benefits and what you can and can't do. and. Uh, what's the difference between an HMO? What's the difference between a PPO? And how can that work for your family? And, you know, in the marketplace, what I really like is you can have different groups. So let's say uh, mom and dad maybe don't have any health problems, so we put them on a bronze plan. But maybe the children have some needs that need to be taken care of, so we put them on a silver or gold plan. So you need somebody that understands how to group your whole family into the plan that's going to be best for your entire family so yeah i think 
as we just heard you explain, the advantage of utilizing someone's services like you, uh, number one, it doesn't cost them anything more. Correct. Uh, that should be said right up front. I mean, you, it is going to cost you the same whether you direct enroll or you use the expertise of someone uh, like Melissa, but it does allow you to understand uh, l numerous other options like you just explained that the kids don't have to be on the same plan as the parents, um, understanding subtle difference of co-pays and deductibles and referrals to specialists and that sort of thing. So that expertise is really helpful in making sure someone makes a good decision. Okay, okay. what uh, what haven't I asked you that uh, you, you'd like to discuss or that uh, you think would be helpful for folks? Um, we talked about that there are people that are coming off Medicaid and have a special enrollment. Certainly if you um, lose your job during the middle of the year, and have a loss of coverage that can make a special enrollment for you also. So just because it's open enrollment for the ordinary individual, there are some special enrollments all throughout the year. So if you have something happen, best to just reach out and call and say, is this a qualifying event for me to come on the plan? Yeah, and that's a that's a term, qualifying event. That's a <laughs> legal term there. So, okay. What else? Um, I'm just... Very excited, and let's see how this rolls out this year. I think this can be really great for Oklahoma this year. Yeah, good. I, and I think, too, yeah, indeed, we're losing a an insurance company as an option. But, you know, for Oklahoma to have seven choices for folks, I'm a big free market, you know, yes. comp competition's good. It uh, drives down costs and, um, um, you know, moves innovation along. And so uh, I think that's a good thing for us to have that, that competition to give folks more choices. Hopefully we'll see in the future some of these companies expand their territories so they're not just within you know those urban areas with a few counties, but uh, that's the other plus. I know that uh, I had conversations this past year with two other potential plans who were looking at coming on in 2023 and, and fairly late in the game chose not to, but uh, we'll look ahead to that in the future for more choices for Oklahoma. Exciting. So. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank well, so you. Thank you for, for being on with us, sharing your expertise. If someone wanted to reach you, how, how could they reach you? Um, you can reach us through a phone call, 918-743-7744, or you can reach out to me by email, which is melissa at magooninsurance.com. Good. Thanks again for, for being with us. So, You're so welcome. Um, folks, thanks for joining us uh, at our latest edition of the Mulready Minutes podcast, where we have dug into the, the details, the ins and outs of uh, individual health insurance. That enrollment period is November 1st through January 15th. Uh, so go get them. We'll see you next time. If you found this episode informative, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Visit oid.ok.gov slash podcast. Let us know what topics you would like to hear about on this podcast. Until next time, take care from the Oklahoma Insurance Department.